What's something creepy that has happened to you that you still occasionally think about to this day? Part 7. Also, please keep supporting us by subscribing our channel, Thread Tonic. Account 1. This will likely get buried, but here goes. It happened five years ago, but I still think about it every day. I came home from work on a Wednesday at the same time as usual, 4.45. I lived in a cul-de-sac that had condos on one side and a nature center parking lot on the other. The parked cars rarely changed except when the NC was busy on weekends. I pulled right in front of my building and parked, super excited about getting that prime spot. A black BMW with completely blacked out windows except for the driver's, which had no tint at all, came quickly from the end of the curve and stopped way too close to me, facing opposite me, toward the main road. I mean, I could not see any light pass through those windows at all, that's how dark they were. I look over and see a dude looking motionlessly forward, hands at ten and two. Early twenties with blonde hair and thick black sunglasses, I decide he's waiting for someone. There is a blonde girl that lives above me that looks his age and start returning some texts. A minute goes by. Then two, then three. I look anxiously over at the gate to my right, expecting to see someone come out and meet this guy. I turn off my car because I'm wasting gas and start reading Reddit. Another two minutes pass, and I now see this as a, a potential problem. I've been side, aying him this whole time, and yo all, he hasn't fucking moved once in six minutes. No phone calls or texts, no scratching his ear. Then I see the rear of his car shake like someone is in the back seat. Hell no. I dial my partner, who was inside, and thankfully working from home that day during this pre-pandemic time, to see if I could get an escort. As soon as I lifted the phone to my ear, the car bolted from the spot it had held for the past eight minutes. I knew it was a kidnapping attempt. In front of my home, timed with my work schedule, and I don't know that I will ever get over it. Account 2 I was leaving this party in farm country, driving down a dirt road in the middle of a cornfield. I was probably too drunk to drive. I was a fucking moron when young, but I wasn't remotely hallucinating or anything. Anyway, I see this weird-looking guy in the hazy distance. I slow down. He's in the direct mi- Account 3 When I was 13, I complimented a girl my age and told her she was pretty, and she was- didn't think anything about it at the time. But after that, she started stalking me, bothering my friends, all that stuff. She gave me the crazy eyes a few times and tried kissing me. Other stuff too, but we can skip that. Eventually, I told her that I appreciated her interest in me. But I wasn't R.L.E. looking for a girlfriend. No offense. I even apologized if I gave her the wrong idea. She freaked out on me, hit my chest a few times, and even shouted, you have no idea who you're fucking with. She wasn't just talking trash. Turns out, I didn't know who I was fucking with. It was a small town and my parents knew her family. My parents also knew that her father had just gotten out of prison following a conviction for murder. They nearly panicked when they found out who I'd pissed off. That incident made me less likely to flirt with girls for a pretty long time. Account 4. Once in preschool, my boyfriend threw a chair at my head and it cut my head a medium amount. It bled a lot. He kept the hair from the chair that tore off of my head in a mint container for three years after that and we didn't break up until third grade. Sometimes I have nightmares that seem like they may be caused by this situation. According to one of his friends, he's in a mental hospital but don't fucking know anymore. Account 5. I was walking down the street and I heard footsteps running up behind me. I turned around, and a man threw a blanket at my head. I dodged the blanket and ran into the street and turned around, yelling. The man just stood there looking at me, and he had a cord in his hand. I ran to my car and called the cops, but they didn't do anything. The man was homeless and lived in a camp right next to my work, so I basically pass his house every day. I haven't seen his again, but I get really freaked out if I hear someone running up behind me now. Account 6 when I was little, maybe 5,6-ish, my extended family was over and we were outside playing badminton. It was towards the end of the day and starting to get dark and a little bit chilly. I was snuggled up with my mom in a double camping chair and was just chilling and watching my family play. 
While I was sitting there, I noticed something up the mountain from my backyard. It was a dark, tall figure, just peering behind from a tree. It was looking from behind the tree, almost as it were hiding and just taking a peek. I don't remember any significant features, but I still remember that night and everything that was going on, and that I saw this thing peeking from behind the tree, super weird. This was in Washington State, and I've always thought of it as being Bigfoot or something. Account 7. Not too creepy. But when I was a kid, my mom and dad took me to look at this car they wanted to buy. It was an old Bronco. I was in the back seat, and I felt something really weird in my gut. My mom asked me what I thought, and I said, I don't like it, don't get it. And she said, well, too bad, we're getting it. Come to find out the dude who sold it to us stole it, and the police were at our door a few weeks later. Oh, Mao. Account 8. When I was in middle school, my dad's stepmom, Charlotte, really got into ghost hunting. It was before all the TV shows and such. It consisted of going to supposedly haunted places at night, taking pictures with digital cameras and looking at them later. There were stories of her floppy disks being destroyed, her being followed home by spirits, and more. She was full of stories. But some of the pictures were interesting and actually captured something, and it was a fun bonding experience. Anyways, my mom, Charlotte, dad's stepmom, my aunt Crystal, cousin Maria, and myself all went ghost hunting at this supposedly haunted cemetery in my town. It's the oldest in my area and has a lot of stories. This cemetery also used to be next door to an old Catholic orphanage, which had a lot of haunting stories as well. I say used to be because the orphanage was torn down several years ago, so we are walking through the cemetery, taking pictures, reading headstones, discussing the people, and Charlotte is sharing stories about this cemetery. Many of them I am just rolling my eyes as I hear about the spirits being seen and experienced here. Well, Aunt Crystal, Maria, and myself all come to a wall and decide to sit. As we are sitting, my mom and Charlotte stand next to us and start talking. As we are talking, the next thing I know, I am about 5,6 feet out away from that wall, still in my seated position. As well as Maria and my aunt, I turned to look thinking that the wall had fallen, and so I jumped. I tried so hard to rationalize it, but the wall was standing. Maria and my aunt start running and screaming. I begin to realize how cold I am and start spinning and holding my butt because it's freezing. As we calm down and talk to Charlotte and my mom, they mention that it all happened in a flash and took them by surprise as well. To this day, I still don't fully know what happened. But my daughter's daycare is in between the cemetery and the ground the orphanage used to occupy, so I pass the cemetery every day and still try to figure it out. Just yesterday, I looked to see if perhaps the wall had fallen by now, thinking that may help explain, but it is still standing straight up. Account 9. We've always had weird things in our house. Small stuff we can't explain. Well, the entrance to our attic is in my room, and it's the only entrance in there. Me and my mom are both night owls and seem to stay up pretty late sometimes. One night I had went to bed early but woke up to the sound of three claps coming from our attic at 3 a.m. I told my parents about this in the morning, and they just kind of laughed and shrugged it off, didn't really believe me. Next night comes around and my mom was awake when it happened again, three claps at 3 a.m. It woke me up that night too, but... Paranormal things like that, I typically just shrug off if it keeps happening. Kind of telling whatever it is that I don't care, really. Just don't hurt me. LOL, so I ended up going right back to sleep. My mom told me she heard it too the second night and believed me then. We store all of our holiday things up there, so I'm in the attic fairly often. Nobody is living up there. To this day, we talk about it and still can't explain it. It never happened other than those two nights and nothing else has happened since then. Maybe it was telling us goodbye or something, I don't know. Account 10. When I was about 9 or 10 years old, my grandma took me to my cousin's Saturday football game. I left my Game Boy in the truck and asked her to come with me to get it. She told me no and that I would be fine to get it myself. I said okay and walked to the parking lot. I grabbed my Game Boy from the truck 
and as soon as I closed the door to the truck and turned around, there was a tall, middle-aged man standing about twenty feet from me, staring at me. I looked at him for a few seconds, and then he raised his right hand and started shaking his pointer finger side to side in the no-no-no fashion while he shook his head and clicked his tongue. After he did that, he lunged and started chasing me. I weaved in and out of cars until I found an opening in the fence that lined the parking lot. I ran back to the game and told my grandma while hysterically crying. Her and a few football dads went to the parking lot and couldn't find the man. I don't even want to wonder what would have happened to me if that man caught me. I still think about it, unfortunately. Account 11. Lots of weird things have always happened to me. I always attract animals, doesn't seem to matter what I'm doing. I always seem to end up with a friend. It ranges from dogs and cats to bees. I am a particular favorite with them, which is great as I adore them, and love rescuing them and helping them recover, and spiders. Lately, though, it's been birds, which is a new one for me. My family and friends tease me for being a witch. Right from when I was a little kid and there'd be an animal or two tagging behind me on the way home from school, I also pick up on other people's energy really easily. Went to a house to help a woman who was injured with her personal cares. Really lovely lady, but any time I went anywhere near her, I got really dizzy and my head was filled with static. I found out later that she has really severe schizophrenia. I lived with my in-laws for a year while our son was quite young. Their house was built in the early 1900s and definitely had more than a couple of ghosts. They were mostly very friendly, just a little bit naughty. They'd hide things from me, which I would spend ages looking for. After a while, I'd scold them and tell them to put the item back. When I'd turn around, what I'd been looking for would be there. They'd do things like lock you out of the house if you went outside, or sometimes just hit some keys on the piano over and over. There was one soul in there that wasn't nice, though. I'd always know when he was around as the great big goofy golden retriever would refuse to come in the house and just bark and growl, and his whole body would be trembling. My son would get upset about the scary mean man in his room and refuse to sleep in there. My mother-in-law would see and hear them too. And to this day, anytime I stay there, there's normally some kind of interaction with them. Account 12. A couple years ago, I, F27, then 24, stopped at a gas station to use the restroom and was walking the aisles looking for a snack when I noticed a man in the aisle looking at me. I wandered into the next aisle to avoid him, on to look up and see he'd followed me and was still intently watching me. When I moved aisles and it happened again, I was really spooked. I dropped everything I had picked up and booked it to my car, which was parked out front. As I hastily drove away, I called my husband, then boyfriend, and told him about it because I was a little freaked out, got home and later that night had someone was kidnapped from that area letter that day. Account 13. When I was around 12 years old, I was walking back towards my school from a tennis lesson. A senior pulled up in his red car, offering me a lift. He asked a bunch of questions like what my parents did for work, how old they were, if I had any siblings, that kind of thing. Looking back, he was trying to familiarize himself with me. And I know straight up what would have happened if I got into that car. He wasn't forceful. He didn't try to get out of his car. He could have very well been a nice, sincere man for all I knew, just trying to help someone. But I'm glad that I didn't run that risk. Account 14. About a decade ago, my boyfriend, now husband, and I went up the California coast to a secluded hotel. It was forest meets the ocean, 20 minutes down a two-lane, curvy highway. The resort was on one end of the road, and a small hike to a meditation maze was on the other. We settled into our room and noticed they left a flashlight advising to bring on the hike. We run across the highway and make it into the forest where a small creek was the only thing making sound. We walk over the small stones and begin our meditation maze from the center, left, right, turn. Going in circles and the sun is getting so low, we will definitely need the flashlight to get back at this point. But continue looking down and following the path the small stones made. I break through the circle and whispered into my boyfriend's ear, leave. As soon as we were away from the maze, I let him know I had peeked up during the maze because I saw a bag. Looked higher up and saw a man in the trees watching us.
I've been to this hotel a couple times before, even had something else creepy happen there, but this was my last stay. Account 15. When I was 12, I'm 35 now, my mom worked until 11 p.m., and my sister, who was 15, was constantly with friends. I had just made some new friends from school that lived about two thorn five miles away on this particular day. I had taken the bus to their neighborhood and hung out most of the night since it beat sitting at home alone, since my sister typically hung with her friends most of the night, too. Around 9 p.m., I started walking home. The route home was on a main street, so I didn't get a chance to stop to use the bathroom, and by the time I got home, I had to go bad. When I walked into my house, all the lights were off, which was pretty typical. I walked up the stairs, and my bedroom light was the only light on in the entire house. Weird, but I had to pee bad, so I didn't think too deep into it. As I got up the stairs, I had to walk past my bedroom to get to the bathroom. There, I saw my sister standing in my room, staring out of the window, wearing my white and orange polo shirt. This was weird for a few reasons. One, she never wore my clothes before. Two. The window was just an ally and my neighbor's house. What would she have been staring at? But having to pee so bad and being in the moment, I didn't consider any of this. As I was in the bathroom peeing, I was yelling at her, Don't wear my fucking clothes anymore. No reply. I go back in my room looking to argue and she was gone. No one was there. At that point, it became very clear that I was alone in the dark in the house. At that point, I ran as fast as I could downstairs and to my next-door neighbor's house and asked if I could stay there for an hour until my mom got home. When I got in their house, I asked to use the phone and called my sister's best friend's house. This was the late 90s, and asked if I could talk to her. Sure enough, she gets on the phone and was there all night. This haunts me to this day. So many questions. Why? Why my shirt? Why my sister? Why that day?